Good morning and welcome to the Senior Hour, which is sponsored by Comfort Keepers in Home Care and Advanced Audiology. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And speaking of quality of life, at the end of life, or before the end of life, our right. guest is Randall Caden, and he's an elder law attorney. And this is going to be quite an interesting program today. I think so. It's mm-hmm. good to see you both. We, yeah. we missed you the last time. It's, uh, <laughs> it was uh, unusual. but uh, It was the first time in over 10 years that Barbara and I miss a show together. Yeah. You know, usually if something happens, she'll cover for me or I'll cover for her. But this time, both of us were out. Right. Isn't that something? Welcome back, Barbara. Thank you. I'm glad to be alive, personally. <laughs> okay. I guess it was different situations. I was ill with the prolonged flu that everybody was getting. But Barbara, Barbara got T-boned in her van and survived, got hit by a truck going, running a red light, uh, and smashing into their vehicle on the driver's side, and she was the driver. Yes. You know, and it just says a lot, Barbara, that, you know, I know you're in physically great shape. And still, it you know, it had literally an impact on you. Oh, it really did. And it's still having an impact. Yeah. I, you know, I guess if I was 30 years old, I would have been up and running already. Mm, you know something? <laughs> I don't think so, though, because I know, yeah. you know, I can't say you're in the shape of a 30-year-old, but you're in really good shape. Well, I've tried and, to be, yes. And, you know, your muscle tone is super. We've seen you do the exercises before uh, <laughs> at the gym and how you do it and the intensity that you do it with. And here, you know, you, you know, get into an accident, survive it, but also, you know, the, all the, you know, somebody hitting you and jarring your body, you know, this way and that way, you, you've made it through this. That's that's true. And thank heavens, you know, we both went to bed that night thinking, we're lucky to be alive. Yeah. Yeah. Literally yeah. lucky to be yeah. alive. Because yeah. we Thank both goodness, could have been yeah. killed. <laughs> but the one bright thing about it, and I think I've said this before, I don't know whether you were here or not, but as they were pulling me out of the back of the van, yeah, they had me on this horrible wooden thing. You know, pulling me out and strapping me in, and I'm thinking, once I got out of the van and I opened my eyes, I thought, whoa, how lucky can this 80-year-old be being carried by four gorgeous men? (laughs) (laughs) Always the silver lining. Always the silver lining. Yeah, well, one of them said, well, at least you haven't lost your sense of humor. (laughs) Right, right. But I swear, every single paramedic or first responder, they are gorgeous men. I've never seen them. some of them are women. Yes, that's right. (laughs) But the majority of them are men. And good heavens, they're good looking. So keep it up, guys. You did a, you did a wonderful job for me that day, oh, that night. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, you know, we, we hope, you know, with Randall here today, that some of our, our listeners don't get T-boned by the, the laws that are out there because there's some... There are some things our seniors have to be aware of as they are getting older and make arrangements beforehand so that there aren't their family and themselves aren't in dire straits at the end. That's right. Uh, estate planning and elder law is something you want to be uh, taking care of and thinking about, uh, not when you're being T-boned, you know, well in advance of, uh, you know, any kind of calamity. And um, today I I put together a list of what I think are the top 10 estate planning mistakes. And I thought it might be interesting to to run through them. Okay. Now, are these in the order of importance or are they just random? Because, you know, some of our listeners get tired and they they say, well, what part of the show should I listen to? Well, then maybe they, well, all of it's important. (laughs) uh, So stay there with us, okay? But yeah, it's going to... uh, uh, the more important ones will uh, be a little bit later. We're going to run down the list. So okay. the first so f- first one will be the last one. Okay. Okay. So still stay tuned. Right. Right. 
So I think the, the number one, or the number tenth uh, biggest mistake, rather, is uh, letting your loved ones suffer through a probate court proceeding. A lot of people just mm -hmm. procrastinate, or they didn't properly fund, or they didn't update their trust, or maybe they um, became incapacitated, they got in a, a car accident, something like that, and mm -hmm. they uh, didn't uh, create the right documents and, and have them in place so that they could avoid having to go to probate court. Tell them what probate court is. It's not probation court, it's probate court. Tell right. them, tell them probate court is uh, where actions are heard when people pass away or possibly when they need a conservatorship. A conservatorship is when a person is incapacitated and somebody else has to go in and create a conservatorship over them so that they can make decisions for them, either financially or for their health care. Now, both of these proceedings are very expensive. They're time-consuming and uh, really uh, all your assets and liabilities Abilities. It's aired in open court. It's available for everyone to see. And most people don't want, th want that. So, you know, the solution is to create a living trust with the other ancillary estate planning documents like a health care directive or financial power of attorney. Mm -hmm. And if you have that all in place, then you should avoid having to go to probate court or your, your loved ones. And so uh, I, that's a, a really big one. And that's probably the most common one uh, in the past that people have heard for why they need to set up a living trust and do estate planning is to avoid a probate court proceeding. But tell us about the consequences when when our listeners don't do that. When, okay. when the, you, yeah. know, you mentioned a little bit of it, but you know, let's say you have assets. Let's say you have right. $100,000 or $500,000, whatever it so, is. So people should know that it's, it's statutory fees. So what happens is uh, for every million dollars that you have in assets, and it's gross assets, not net assets. So you could have, for example, a million dollar house, and you could have a $900,000 dollar loan and the way that the law looks at that is that you actually have a million dollars in assets even though you only have a hundred thousand in equity and so at, for every million dollars though well let's say the first million you you would have to pay twenty three thousand dollars in legal fees to administer that estate mm -hmm. the executor gets paid the same amount another twenty three thousand dollars plus you have a uh, court costs so you're getting up to fifty thousand dollars for let's say a million dollar estate that goes through probate even though the estate might only be worth very, very little. Mm -hmm. And the average time to go through probate in L.A. County right now is between a year and a half to two years. Okay? Oh, my goodness. So uh, going back and forth <coughs> to these court proceedings, uh, gathering up assets, paying off creditors, uh, and eventually distributing the estate takes a, a long time, and it's completely unnecessary if you just set up an, an estate plan and you took care of all those decisions in advance. So let's say you have uh, $500,000 in assets. You have to, our seniors have to be aware of they're trying to make sure that when they go, their loved ones have something left for them. But by going through probate court, that all of a sudden gets chopped sometimes in half. So yeah. you have to be, if you think in advance, a lot of this can be avoided. Well, 100% of this can be avoided. There you go. Yes. Right? And that's that's why I'd say it's the 10th the biggest mm -hmm. mistake, not the number one biggest mistake. Mm -hmm. So why don't we move on to number nine? Mm -hmm. uh, number nine, I, I see this sometimes, and this is what really leads to all the fights is it's not ensuring that you nominated the right people to be in control of that trust and power of attorney. In other words, mm -hmm. your trustees and agents, they you really have to trust them. And um, you have to trust them not only uh, in your bones, but to also carry out what your wishes are, not what their wishes are. Mm -hmm. Very, very important, uh, especially in the healthcare arena. Mm -hmm. Somebody can have a totally different stance on healthcare decisions than you, and if they are named as your agent in your health care directive, then you may not be getting, uh, you might not have the decisions made for you that you would have wanted made for you. And it also applies to the financial arena because perhaps you're a conservative person and you would have inv invested your investments very conservatively and your, your trustee does something that's that's inappropriate. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, once you, you're gone, you and your spouse are gone, uh, if, if you named your kids as trustees, what I always say is uh, expect them to act the way that they acted when they were children. So if they were kids and they, they were able to work things out, then that's probably okay. But if they fought a lot as kids, you they might have problems going forward. So mm -hmm. you, you really got to think through who you're naming to be in control of these uh, instruments. It's really, uh, in the worst case scenarios, I've seen families completely ripped apart because this just one decision wasn't planned out very well. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, also, states in litigation can be completely eaten up with
with fighting relatives. So again, very, very important to choose the right people eaten, to be in control. Eaten up by court costs, attorney fees, and oh, yeah. everything oh, like yeah. that. It's, uh, I, I had a case a few years ago where I had four siblings fighting over dad's uh, salt and pepper shaker collection. Oh. And uh, they probably cumulatively spent over $200,000 in legal fees fighting with each other for salt oh. and pepper shakers. My so uh, just to, to show you how really crazy it can get. Mm. So now, the number eight, uh, I'd say the most common and biggest mistake is this thinking that all living trusts are the same, when that is definitely not true. Uh, there's, there's all sorts of trusts out there for all sorts of different reasons. And so um, you want to make sure that uh, you have the right trust. Now, these days, a lot of people uh, are do-it-yourselfers. I I'm actually a do-it-yourselfer in a lot of cases. Uh, but there are certain things that I wouldn't do. For example, I wouldn't touch the plumbing on my house or deal with the electricity. Uh, the, the, qu the consequences of me messing that up are, are just too dire. And so uh, I don't want to mess that up. And so I hire a professional to, to do that. Mm -hmm. um, another example that I like to give is, you know, this is pretty extreme, but if, what if you were jumping out of an airplane and you you are relying on your parachute? You want an expert to have packed that, that chute. Um, <laughs> if not, obviously things can go drastically wrong. And so now, now that is a dire consequence. <laughs> right. So estate, estate planning is similar. You you want to make sure that you've you've done it uh, correctly. Okay. Now, number seven, uh, most common mistake, I'd say, is uh, not making sure you have the right powers of, of attorney in place for your protection. Um, and this applies both for health care directives and for uh, financial powers of attorney. So uh, a lot of people should know that with old advanced health care directives, they're, they're sometimes not honored. And uh, people are surprised to learn that so just by virtue of the fact that they're old, they're not honored. So you really want to make sure that you have uh, updated directives. You you also want to make sure that you discuss your health care wishes with your agents and if uh, you're a senior you want to take that advanced health care directive to your doctor and execute what's called a pulse a physician's order for life-sustaining treatment to make that a doctor's order and if you t if you carry out all three of these actions then you have a real good chance of your health care uh, decisions being made in accordance with your wishes and if you don't uh, unfortunately the statistics tell us that uh, you're probably your wishes probably are not going to be carried out at least not to a T and that's, well, that's uh, very scary well that's interesting because when Russ was in the hospital a couple of times mm -hmm. last year I was asked <coughs> and he was asked whether he had a health care directive yeah and of course I had to bring it in sure and show them yes we do have it yeah, they, they, they under federal law have to ask you for the yes, healthcare directive. And they did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is which is great. Um, there's all sorts of things that happen though. You know, uh, they, sometimes they get ignored. Sometimes they're misplaced in the file. Uh, sometimes parts of the directive get missed. Um, sometimes its interpretation is interpreted incorrectly. So again, you really want to have those conversations with your your agents and your doctors and make sure that your wishes are going to be carried out the way you want. Well, just there are, you, oh, sorry. Yeah. There are two ways to go mm -hmm. on that. Either keep me alive indefinitely or don't keep me alive. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's true. I, I, the way I, I put it to my clients is the choices are keep me alive no matter what or yes. give my agents the authority to decide mm -hmm. whether I should stay alive or whether I should they should take me off of life-sustaining treatment. And so uh, almost 100% of my clients have always chosen to give that power to their agent rather than making it set in stone that they must be kept alive no matter what. Mm -hmm. You know, but just making sure also that uh, our listeners understand, and this was brought up last week on our show. You need to make sure that your any of the paperwork that you are doing is updated, that you revisit them periodically. And I was talking about the uh, smoke alarms and every, and you know, when you have uh, certain times of the year, you will not only change those, but you'll at some point in life on your birthday maybe you take a look back and make sure uh, these the the elements of what is there is what you want, but also that you say, okay, I've looked at this and redated, because sometimes uh, people, there's certain groups of people, 
insurance companies, hospitals, and things like that will that will look at it and say, "This is 20 years old, and we're not going to accept it." Like like you said, right boy, now. oh boy, are you singing my tune? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, absolutely 100% true. Estate planning is not a one and done. It's a living, breathing set of documents that change as often as you change, and even more often because they change with the law. So well, you really want to make sure that you have updated documents and your wishes are updated in those documents. One of my New Year's resolutions, which I've never told anybody, but oh, <laughs> now I'm saying... It's a great saying, place to do it, Barbara. Right, well, that's up. right. Um, one of the things that... Um, one of the most important things that I wanted to do was make sure that our living trust is up to date. Yeah. And well, that's, definitely uh, that's give us a call and docket. come on in. And, you know, we have those uh, free initial consultations. And also, you know, with regard to these powers of attorney and trust, what we do for our clients is we put the name of their instrument and information and we laminate it on the back of our business card and we tell people to hold it in their wallet oh, because good. when they open up an account, they may not remember what their trust name is, for example, or if they mm -hmm. get in a car accident uh, and they're incapacitated, God forbid, you know, in your situation from your accident, if you were didn't have the capacity to make a decision, they would have found uh, our card and called us and we will send over a certified copy of your powers of attorney so that uh, the people uh, who, wherever you go, they're making the right decisions, your decisions. Well, that th the fact that we were in that accident really is what spurred me into yeah. getting it out and looking at it and thinking, wait a minute, some of these things aren't correct and I need to get it done. Mm -hmm. well, well, let's keep going. I may I may scare you here today then. Uh, okay. So. <laughs> Just to mention though that, you know, when I go run, I carry my cell phone with me, but I also carry an old driver's license and also my power of attorney with my ID just yeah. in case I get hit or you know going conscious or something like that or just can't make it to the end you know just pooping out but you know one of the things you know on our on our driver's license you know it does say that we'll donate our bo body parts correct right. but mm -hmm. why doesn't it have on there and it's probably because it's fluid because it's going to change but for each individual listening to the show with your driver's license since if you're unconscious in an ex accident or you've fallen down and you're you're brought to the emergency room you know people aren't going to know exactly who to call and who has power of attorney unless your records are there and maybe they're not but you know I think it's a good way to have with your identification the person to talk to in case you can't make medical decisions I 100% agree yeah 100% uh, agree we need to work on that for this community I think yeah let's yeah put well, that, let's put that well, out the ID and yeah that's you know, that's uh, again power of attorney uh, that's that that is the exact reason that we do laminate the cards with the information because That's an you just never idea. know Great and idea. and you know it could be unconscious you could forget about it but it'll be in your wallet and uh, you know this way it'll be available for someone to uh, contact the right people and in case of an emergency let, let me just finish the the second half of the seventh mistake which is uh, not having an updated financial power of attorney um, if, if again if it's old a lot of institutions won't take it um, also there are many many different types of financial powers of attorney. Uh, there's what's we call, what we call dime store durables, and uh, those are pretty much worthless. They're a couple pages long. You see them every now and then, and, and no institution generally will take it. Uh, and then we have estate planning financial powers of attorney, which are great for carrying out your wishes, uh, and they make complete sense, but they're not going to help with divestment of assets in case you need long-term care. So if you want asset protection mm -hmm. and you want to avail your yourself of government benefits, you need to have an elder law financial power of attorney. Um, and they're, they're more complicated and we make our agents go through a little more hoops to uh, enforce them because they're so powerful. But really, again, if you're a senior, you really ought to have an elder law financial power of attorney in place. Okay. But we're going to, I think, you know, we're getting some great information and we hope that our seniors are staying with us on this roundup. But uh, we need to take a break. But when we come back, you know, we've gone through four of the elements of. Um estate planning and the mistakes of state planning and I think it's just so important that our listeners stay tuned uh, so that we can get a whole gist of what they need to do when they start facing end of life. I'm Dr. Gene Dorio with my co-host Barbara Cochran on your hometown station AM 1220 KHTS.